Good afternoon. Happy Sunday. I've had a lot of people asking me to make videos about the verdict, the Earl David Warden verdict. Um, I've also had a lot of people asking me to apologize for the prediction I made. Um, I guess. I don't know. The prediction I made was the prediction I made. You go. In you go. You get some, boy. You're just a love-making machine. Uh, that rooster right there that you could barely see in the sun is Indigo, and this one right here is Fabio. So, they like to get their love making on. Um, so anyway, uh, I made the prediction that I made based on the best information available to me at the time. The split in the jury, the number of jurors who thought that they could come to an agreement if given more time and the amount of time that they had already spent making their specific deliberations. So given that same information, the longer, the longer juries deliberate, the less likely they are to come back with uh, guilty verdicts. And the, you stand there. Oh, you want to come? You can come. The, uh, the longer they deliberate, the uh, less likely they are to come to a guilty. That's just, just a thing. Sorry. And the more split they are, or the fewer people who are already voting guilty, the less likely they are to come to a guilty verdict. That's just, that's just the way it is. Like, uh, it, given the same information, I would make the same uh, prediction. And I'm not going to apologize for it. Yes, it was wrong, but I'm not going to apologize for it because it was the best prediction I could make at the time. And given the same information, I would make the same prediction again because statistically speaking, the, the odds are in the favor of that being the outcome. So, so there's that. Uh, I would like to see transcripts. It would be interesting to see what was testified to and by whom and what objections were made and by whom and how the court ruled on those specific objections. It would be interesting to see the evidence that was presented to the jury. I have a uh, distinct belief that the evidence that was presented to the jury, I'm holding the camera low, I'm sorry. Uh, the evidence that was presented to the jury uh, was fairly rudimentary and it was narrowly focused on the specific act and uh, didn't, in fact, touch on Shell or anything like that. So uh, it'd be interesting to see that. I would, if anybody ever does get the transcripts, I would probably go over them if I got a copy of them. So um, if that's a, if that's something you want me to do, get me a copy of the transcripts and I'll go over them. Uh, as far as my initial my initial thoughts on the uh, on the outcome, uh, number one. I kind of thought that on that second day that a juror, a juror, or multiple jurors, plural, had access to the internet and had independently researched Earl. Um, but in hindsight, considering that it was four or five hours on that second day of deliberations, I am less likely to think that. I mean, if someone had, had whipped out their phone and said like, oh, hey, look, he's a He's a dirty fucking rapist with a history of raping. He's a multiple time felon. And look at all these videos on the internet saying how bad he is. So he must be bad. If that had happened, I don't think it would have taken an additional four hours. Um, so I'm, I'm less likely to think that there was improper uh, influence on the jury. And more likely to think that the uh, there was someone on the guilty side who was... Uh, very good at convincing his fellow jurors that uh, there was, in fact, guilt. Uh, another thing that I was kind of questioning was uh, apparently, allegedly, I guess, I don't know this to be certain, I haven't seen any of these settlement agreements. Again, if somebody doesn't want to get those to me, I would be happy to go over them. Uh, but apparently, as part of a settlement agreement, Earl agreed to withdraw his guilty, or uh, his, uh, he agreed to withdraw his, his uh, motion to have a jury decide his sentence. And uh, in exchange for that, and in exchange also for 
allegedly some agreement to not appeal. Uh, he and the uh, district attorney agreed on a 20-year sentence without probation or parole. Um, the thing that I thought was, was interesting in that, or that I was questioning, I should say, was what did he, uh, give up? What, what appeal did he give up? Did he give up just the right to appeal the sentence or did he give up the right to appeal the verdict? And it doesn't make sense that he would give up the right, the, the district attorney wouldn't really gain much if he gave up the right to appeal the sentence because he agreed to the sentence. And the, your odds of being able to successfully appeal the sentence that you agreed to are somewhere in the slim to none range. So considering that it's in the slim to none range, the, uh, ooh, that one was loose. The odds of him doing an appeal on it in the first place are, you know, not good. And the odds of him winning are not good. There, there's nothing for the uh, district attorney to gain. So what he most likely agreed to was he most likely agreed to not appeal the verdict. And that doesn't mean that he can't appeal the verdict. It just means that it's very unlikely that he will be successful in appealing the verdict because he's got that one extra hurdle to get past. So that's all I really have to say about the, uh, about the Earl trial. Um, I've always maintained that I believed he was guilty. I am happy to see that he's being punished for his crimes. I don't think justice has been served because his daughter is a victim and will always be a victim. And no amount of jail time for Earl will change that. Uh, it'd be nice if our justice system included some sort of uh, therapy sessions or something for survivors of rape and sexual assault and things like that. Uh, I also don't think that Earl got enough of a punishment. I understand that he uh, negotiated it. I understand he settled it. But it's still my firm belief that uh, pedophiles are the one class of people that should get the wood chipper. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't take any pleasure in wishing that on Earl, but he is now a convicted pedophile. And, you know, consistency is consistency and I want to be consistent. And just because, just because I have some knowledge of the dude doesn't mean that I'm going to change my mind on his consistency and his consistency should be the consistency of someone who's gone through a wood chipper. I don't wish, I don't wish harm on him. I just wish that the, uh, that the justice system allowed for that particular sentence. As far as the sentence he got, I think it was too short. Um, but again, he negotiated for it and that's really all you can do. So that's, that's my only thoughts on, uh, the Earl trial. You know, it's, it's going to suck. Uh, people like I've still heard like, uh, like Texas Sheepdog, he still thinks that this is somehow retaliatory. Again, again, I just want to remind everybody that there is nothing retaliatory about this. Uh, the daughter made these allegations in 1996 or something like that. Earl was not known as a auditor or anything like that in 1996. So that's just silly. That's just stupid. Why would you even... <sighs> So it's not retaliatory. The fact that they found it due to him uh, engaging in, uh, as the auditors would call it, First Amendment protected activity, but as I would call it, threatening the, uh, the manager of the plant and the manager of the plant's family. That's what I would call it. But hey, you know, your mileage may vary. You do you. Um, that doesn't change the fact that the actual allegations were made in 1996 and the actual victim is not the police and is not shell, but the victim is his daughter and his daughter is the one who's making the allegations. His daughter's plural made allegations. His daughters testified against him and it's not 
and shell never came into the mix. Shell was not part of it. So I'm, I'm sorry to the people who are trying to maintain a narrative that, that, uh, Earl was run up based on, uh, retaliation or something like that. But no, it was supported by a probable cause. It came back from a grand jury. I know probable cause is an incredibly low bar, but it is a bar and the state hurdled it. They maintained it throughout any motions to dismiss. I don't know if Earl even tried to file a motion to dismiss, but they maintained it through any motions to dismiss that he had, in fact did file, if any. And they actually got a guilty verdict, so that's beyond a reasonable doubt. So, I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. It isn't retaliatory. And, you know, just because somebody doesn't believe it doesn't change anything on that part. He is... Uh, He's guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. And Jack or anybody else's opinion on that doesn't change anything. Anyway, I'm rambling at this point. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.